Hello ladies, gentlemen, and those that don't identify themselves in that binary. I'm the Ski, and welcome to my Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke. Having just beaten Bead with just two Pokemon, it was time to progress further into Galar Mine number two. The less imaginatively named mine in Galar, but you know, if you've only got two, why not just name them one and two so you always know which one you're talking about. First person we run into is this worker. It's nice to know that the workers in the Galar mines all do wear hard hats and high vis to make sure that people are aware of where they are and what they're doing, even if visitors to the mine aren't required to do the same. I've moved Bellerophon to the front of the party and thought, well, you know what, water gun against a Karkol seems like exactly the thing. As it turns out, Karkol has steam engine and can therefore now go much faster, as it will be three times its original speed. By doing 50% damage to Bellerophon, I decided it was a pretty good time to change Pokemon, so I put in Heart. Heart had done quite well against Bead, perfect time to get some training. Smackdown from Karkol, did a bit of damage, but Heart was still in it. So Aqua Jet, it's not as if Karkol is going to get any faster than plus six. But I didn't need to worry because Aquajet took out the Karkol entirely. And that was it for this worker. We gained quite a few experience points and that leveled up both Bellerophon and Heart, which is where we want to be because we've got a few more levels in each of them before they get to the level the Kabu is at. So we get the chance to learn Headbutt. Headbutt, much better move than Tackle, same type. So we still have the same move spread, but it just does more damage and has the chance of flinching the opponent. Bellerophon gets headbutt, no questions there. I was pretty happy with that. Worker Francis is defeated. And uh, we're able to progress further on into the mine. Now we picked up three Dusk Balls. It's a bit far into the mine for us at the moment, but next time we're in a cave we can start picking up Pokemon. Well, we can pick up our one Pokemon in that cave using the Dusk Ball, getting the bonus. Had a quick look up here, there was no item, and thought, well if Bellerophon's the front of the party, I probably need to get a bit of healing into it. I've got potions, don't need potions in general, so I spent a potion to just bring Bellerophon up to normal. And then Heart, who's been doing quite well for us. Same thing again. Get some healing in. Wasted a whole 1 HP of that potion. Not a major issue. We've now got super potions, so it's not too much trauma for us. So this worker notices us and we go to battle. Worker Yvonne. Rob and Roller. First of all. So we've got Heart. Heart has Aqua Jet, it's going to be super effective. Perfect place to train. So Aqua Jet comes out. Doesn't quite do half damage, but Rock and Roller has weak armor, so the next Aqua Jet should do a bit more damage, even if Rock and Roller is now going to be a bit faster. Aqua Jet, though, is a priority move, so I wasn't too concerned. 10 points of damage, not a problem for us, that's a fifth of our hit points. Uh, so the Aqua Jet comes in and the Rock and Roller is taken out. Barkley leveled up. I mean, that's great long term, not necessarily needed now or for the next gym, but seeing as how much of a star Barkley was in Turfield, I'm quite happy that we're keeping Barkley up with the rest of the party. So Timber comes out. That's a fighting type, probably with some rock moves as well, so it's time to put out Mulder. Don't take anywhere near as much damage from the timber if we've got Mulder out. And as was discussed in the bead fight, if you've seen the previous episode, Mulder it has high defenses and high hit points, so we're really pretty pretty effective putting Mulder in in most situations. So the Mulder uses confusion, does a lot of damage to the timber, and we take a low kick, which does a whole whopping two points of damage. Second Confusion, 
takes out the timber. And we're looking ready for Pokemon number three. Unfortunately, there is no Pokemon number three for Worker Avon. So we've managed to progress a bit further, and we didn't take too much damage, so we can just keep moving on without needing to go and heal. Pick up a Grip Claw. I mean, I'm not one to use extended moves like Bind and Wrap, but as we're walking along, this Galarian Stunfisk jumps up and attacks us. Heart comes out first. I think, right, I don't know much about this type. What are we going to do? So, swapping Korax. I believe it's a Steel type, maybe a Ground type. Probably worth putting in Korax. If there's a ground move going off, we'll be fine. Stunfisk goes for the Sucker Punch. We didn't attack. Perfect. So I started with Pluck. In comes the Sucker Punch, and it does a fair amount of damage to Korax. And Pluck does nothing. At this point, discretion is the better part of Valor, and we run away to fight another day. But of course it's not in fact another day, as we run straight into Team Yell. Team Yell ask if we're a gym challenger. Um, of course we are. And Team Yell say, well great, we want to fight a gym challenger. You're good Pokemon trainers. You know, you're dead right. Hop comes along and inserts himself into the situation. But Team Yell get a bit annoyed with him, but are pretty happy to start a battle if that's what Hop wants. And of course it is. Hop is ever optimistic. So, two of the champions endorsed trainers versus two from Team Yell. I do like that the grunts are. I was just trying to knock out challengers one at a time. I didn't want to have to fight two of them, but there we go. We fight alongside Hop to take out some Team Yell grunts. I like these double battles with Hop. Mostly because I have no idea what Hop is going to do at any given moment other than begin fighting with a Wooloo. But, you know, you get a bit more of, I don't know, a dynamic fight when you can't really predict what's happening. So, first things first, we sent out Bellerophon and Hop sends out Wooloo. Now, Bellerophon's got nothing too effective against them, but hopefully we'll get, you know, some nice moves in and Bellerophon can do a bit of damage. Unfortunately, Bellerophon just takes half damage and almost gets taken out by a follow-up Snarl. Not great, but at least Bellerophon is still alive because, well, we're going to need Bellerophon to take out Kabu. Do a bit of damage to the Feeble, but decide that actually we're going to need to swap out immediately. So this time I went for Rupert. Rupert is now sort of one of my stronger Pokemon. High level, got some pretty good hit points. It's got normal typing and strength, so it can do quite a bit of damage with a normal move, which hits most things. You know, not super effectively, but effectively. And has Bulldoze to do damage to everyone, should we want to. And also, knowing Snarl is on the field, Snarl lowers special attack, and Rupert is very much a physical attacker, so it's not a massive issue. We also learn in this fight that the Wooloo that Hop uses has Double Kick, which is going to be quite important for us if we're ever going to go to battle against Hop again, which, as you've seen if you've watched previous episodes, we battle Hop quite a lot. So out comes the Snarl to take out the Wooloo, and that's why I chose to use Bulbose in this situation. Bulbose hits every other Pokemon in the battle, but if the Wooloo was going out anyway, I wouldn't be taking out my own teammate. Bulldoze also has the secondary effect of lowering the speed of the opposing Pokemon, which may mean they move after us, so we might get our second Bulldoze off before they've had a chance to do any damage. As Reboot came in, Reboot's going to take a lot of damage from a Bulldoze, so I chose not to Bulldoze, and just went for the Feeble because it was doing Snarl, and Snarl is a pretty damaging move. Unfortunately, Rupert's attack fell because the Lunoon had baby doll eyes, so we're not in the strongest position we could be, but this turn we should be able to take out both Pokemon 
that they have. Mulder and Korax level up, having not been in this fight, but, you know, progressing towards that level 27 that we're looking for. And yes, the amount of damage we did was enough to take out Thievil. So while the playing field isn't reset, we've got a reboot on our side. We've got Rupert with a bit of attack damage, but went up a level, ready to do a bit of uh, fighting. Then we have a Pancham to fight and a Leopard. So the main option in this case is to Bulldoze. Reboot is definitely faster than Rupert, so Reboot will get the double kick in, which should do a lot of damage to these Dark Type Pokemon. Then we're going to take a bit of damage back, but thankfully the Leopard goes for Reboot rather than Rupert. Four times of the damage, that's 20 hit points. Probably would have been a bit less to Rupert, but maybe not that much less. And we're able to take out the Leopard, so it can only do that to us once. Now the Pancham is a problem. Not sure what moves it has. All I know is that it's probably going to do enough damage to take out one or two of us. Especially because Rupert, despite being fighting type, is weak to fighting. At this point, taking Rupert out of the fight, putting Korax in. Flying types are strong against fighting, which obviously Pancham has a lot of fighting moves, so we shouldn't be taking too much damage. And maybe Reboot can take it out before we have to do anything. Reboot being a remarkably quick Pokemon. Flame Charge comes in, Pancham takes a fair bit of damage, and Reboot gets faster because the fastest Pokemon always needs more speed. And we get a lucky break in that Pancham is upping its own attack rather than attacking us. So we'll put the block in, which should take it out, but the Flame Charge gets there first, and we're able to defeat Team Yell in conjunction with Hop. It does show that while we beat up Hop all the time, Hop's not a bad trainer. It's got a selection of different Pokemon types, which, you know, that was the downside that Bead had. And, you know, is going to be a decent rival for us when we get there. The other great thing about fighting Team Yell is that Bellerophon, our Tutel, is evolving into a Dreadnought. Yeah, a Pokemon whose aesthetic you can really understand. Big biting mouth, big strong shell, very much the Dreadnought type Pokemon. Blurathon also gets to learn Rock too. So having now got Rock type alongside the Water type, that's going to be a stab move. We don't want to get rid of Bite, because Bite's a good dark type attack. We don't want to get rid of Protect, because Protect is a useful move in general. So, realistically, our new Headbutt that we just got, it's the only move we can really get rid of. But now we have a nice array of moves that will help us against Kabu. Team Yell Grunts understand that, well, you know, Leon's not useless, Hop's clearly pretty good as well. And Hop's pretty happy, and we can go and find Kabu further in the mine. So after fighting Team Yell, we get to head a bit further into the mine and wonder what we're going to come up against. We'll pick up a star piece, which we could sell for a high price in the shops. That's not really going to help us long term. We've now got Bellerophon up front. Level 22, so could do with a bit of levelling up, but now ready to face Kabu. Have a wander down and see there's this guy ready to battle, so there might be something down this end. And there's a bag of soft sand which will boost the power of ground type moves, so when we've got a more ground focused Pokemon that can hold items, we'll use that. Unfortunately, Rupert with Bulldoze can't hold ground type items because it's a klutz. Don't rail staff Vincent, you know, rail staff looking after the mining rails, I presume? Or maybe they're gonna, you know, expand the railway system through Hulbury somehow. But Bellerophon is up front and has Water Gun, which against Drillbur does a pretty good amount of damage as the Drillbur hones its claws. It's always a worry when you see opposing trainers start using setup moves like that. Accuracy and attack being increased against us. Let's just hope Bellerophon can take it out quickly enough. It's not a two-hit KO, but Drillbur hones its claws again, 
and suddenly everything seemed nice and chill as Bellerophon, our wonderful Dreadnought, can put that third water gun straight into the drill there to knock it out. Water gun's not the best move on Dreadnought because Dreadnought is a primarily physical attacker, but it's the only water move we've got, and you've got to keep water moves on your water type Pokemon moving forward. Rail Staff sent out an Onyx. I mean, I don't know what use an Onyx is to a railway, but sure. And Bellerophon goes with a water gun and just obliterates the Onyx. Unbelievably good. Very happy with Bellerophon. Who levels up? Four more levels to go before Bellerophon is at the level for taking out Carby. So we have a bit more of a wonder and find a TM. This one for Sand Tomb. Sand Tomb's a pretty good move. Gets a sandstorm trapping an opponent. It's not going to be useful for us at all. I noticed the Stunfisk on the ground and avoided it because I really didn't want to fight another one of those. And we come across Hop and Carbu. Carbu has beaten up Team Yell, thanks them for helping with his training. Yep, that's training in inverted commas because I think he was just beating up Team Yell to make them go away and helping out a Karkol. Carbu's very in favour of honest work apparently, as this Karkol was doing, you know, prior to Team Yell turning up and being Team Yell at it. So Carbu's been here training. You know, specialising in fire type Pokemon, training against water type is, I mean, I think it's crazy, but fair enough. Um, Carbu's now ready for us to take him on in Motostoke. So, in a moment, we'll be heading out to follow him and take on the gym challenge. At this point, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. And, as always, have a lovely day.